two lights. But when they, Abdullah ibn Umar, I just learned this, he said he wasn't just the person that married two of the daughters of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the only person to marry two daughters of any prophet. Mm-hmm. So any prophet from Adam to now, to ever, really, to the day of judgment, was a of the I only remember, I only remember the night when, um, like when, like the night before he died, when um, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came Allah to him in his dream and said, "You're gonna break your fast for me." Yeah, oh, that's the story. Yeah. yeah, that's the story. Jannah. That's crazy. Bro. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I think there was like a poet saying used to say when they used to do that. It goes, um, "Don't make it easy for the shaitan to continue allow him to do fitna because he's already struggling with the shaitan, and by yeah. you putting him down now, he's got two battles going on. Mm. You know what I mean? Allah. There's always like, there's always a person that you can like resonate with." G'day guys, welcome to another Fair Dinkum episode. Um, in today's episode, we're going to be speaking about are the Sahaba relevant as role models in today's society? Um, I'm going to throw it to you guys straight away. Obviously, like within our society nowadays, we see like celebrities, whatnot, people that are easy to follow. But you hear about Sahabas in their stories a lot, like Umar ibn Khattab, the Khulafa al-Rashidun and whatnot. Um, and do you guys see them or do you guys resonate with them? And if you guys do, which Sahaba resonates with you the most? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> 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 yeah. We'll kick it off with you, sis. Go. Start me with one of them. So, are you asking me which Sahaba is the most relatable or what I've learned from a certain Sahaba? No, no, I didn't ask what you've learned from them. Who do you resonate with? He didn't even hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, he didn't even hear it. Well, I didn't get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, which Sahaba do you resonate with the most? Oh my god, I'm gonna be one of those cliche guys. But it's honestly Yeah <coughs> it's not for the reasons people would think. Um I'd say Umar ibn Khattab Radiallahu mm. Radiallahu Anh Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah. I did research, didn't I? <laughs> um the only reason why is because um the one thing that I valued the most out of like uh, his traits or his attributes that I'd hope to implement inshallah in my life. Um, is the fact that he gave people around him the confidence to become believers in public. Like, they only started praying at the Kaaba Jama'ah when Umar turned into a Muslim. Mm. So he came out, and then even like when they were going on Hijrah, he yelled out, Hey, anyone want their mo- their, 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 um, their mothers to be, uh, was it widows? Or their, or like mother, it. Their, their wives to be widows or their yeah. mothers to be... Yeah. Um, have well, orphans like, like, yeah. like yeah. yeah the kids to be the kids yeah, to, to, to cry about their kids dying hey, bro, come through yeah. you know what I mean like he had so much like belief and it's like very very strong like his iman and his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, his and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so strong that he didn't fear the eminent like like the tangible danger like there seemed to be tangible mm. danger yeah. and they they say that like it, um, yes, God in his in his um, talk last time, like uh, he he said in it, he was fighting off people in the first day. You know when they actually went out to pray next to the Kaaba, yeah. he was fighting people all day. They were fighting people so much that they missed Asr. Subhanallah. Yeah. So, so you want to fight people? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, those days are past. But, <laughs> 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 but um, what I'm saying is basically the fact that. Um, someone can have, mashallah, such an effect on the people around him yeah. that it makes them proud to be, like, like makes them proud of their identity as a believer or as a uh, Abdullah. You know what I mean? It makes them comfortable or, or or confident to be proudly a Muslim out loud, which is very, very. It's difficult, and for some reason, this day and age, it's like it's kind of frowned upon. Like we see, we see people on social media, like they try to put across a good point, and then they just get bombarded. You know what I mean? Mm. Like they get either, either, either try to be like rebut, like someone tries to rebut them, yeah, or, or like um, they just get backlash. You know what the similarity is though, yeah. Judging the intention. So at that time, Sorry. you're telling with the story of Umar and whatnot, the deen was strange. Yeah. You know what I mean? And a guy like Umar, you know what I mean, who doesn't care and he's got faith. Staunch, you yeah. know what I mean? Like he believes what he believes, he's formed it as his identity. Yeah. He's gonna go out and say, like, what no, I don't care what you guys are doing. Yeah. It, this is the way that it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we don't have any umrahs nowadays in society when yeah. right when nowadays our soci- like our deen is strange. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wearing a thobe outside, you know what I mean, or having certain sunnas appear physically on you, 
It's strange. Yeah. At you least in mean? the Western world. At least in, yeah. two, at least bl- in the Western yeah, world. Yeah, blessing is like if you go to the Muslim countries and you have a thobe and a beard, yeah. then it's normal. And usually yeah. when you take people as role models, you st- you sort of like adapt to their certain physical traits, to the w- their mannerisms, the way that they talk and whatnot. But I think before like, we should we should have started the podcast a bit differently. What do you guys define as a role model? Like, because can anyone be a role model? Oof. We had this talk last time. <laughs> yeah. That didn't go down too well. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even make the cut. Um. But I think a role model, like, in general, we should be taking these people as role models. You know, because if you want to take the interpretation that a role model is, you take them, like, not blindly, but 100% of their life, then o- obviously only these people of this stature, we shouldn't take Michael Jordan or whoever to be a role model. You know, obviously there's people that you kind of, like, 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 the how they act or the way they portray the deen, maybe. Yeah, Khabib, Muhammad Ali. So like you enjoy them, but obviously the best of example is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. So we'll just like stick to that as a role model. And obviously these people, will, our job is to also take habits from them because there's habits they had that are still good habits and are part of our deen, you know? Yeah, 100%. But, so when you spoke about Umar, is it things like you aspire to be? Like the effect he had on his on people around him, the confidence he gave, the faith he gave, the strength yeah, he gave, exactly. so that kind of thing. And it's like it's not like he told people, "Hey, be confident now that I'm the Muslim." Now that I'm yeah. Muslim, he was kind of like, "I'm gonna shine, and you guys can come with me yeah. too." You know what I mean? We were talking about that that quote from Coach Ka- uh, Coach Carter. Yeah, the, the, he, he the let, light. Yeah, if you're, if you're if you're bold enough to let yourself become who you're supposed to become, you know what I mean? If you're if you're if you're um strong enough or brave enough to put yourself out there like that then you're gonna get a lot of people go hang on this man's doing it i'm gonna do it too mm. do you know what i mean that's why a lot of people came out of the woodwork and they went with him yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean because it kind of your your empowerment empowers others yeah and and the fact that that umar and khattab did that for the people it's it's actually a bigger it's like a bigger service to them than anything because now they can pray not in the not, not in hiding you know and and dawah can be done outwardly, yeah. like so they he could. He gave them confidence. He gave them. He gave them the confidence, and they felt protected. And you know what's funny as well, yeah. Rasulullah with his wisdom actually knew about this. You know what I mean? Because he made dua, yeah, that one of the two umars accept Islam. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the better of obviously the better one of the two will accept Islam. Yeah. Because in our day and age, yeah, we need people like Umar. Do you know what I mean? People that can force a movement, who has a strong identity. And can show justice Like the justice of Umar is unparalleled mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that wisdom comes from the fact that Like realising that Islam isn't built on weak people Do you know what I mean? And they have strong characters The bold thing that you're speaking about Yeah, You get what I mean? But yeah What, what, minute, uh, what was it again? Like the better believer is a stronger the believer, str- stronger believer. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. So we should be strong It's not just physical It's mental And that kind of thing It's like One of the strong things we know about Umar is his faith yeah. Obviously physical attributes Everyone's obviously heard the narrations You can hear the stories But his faith was one of his strongest things You know yeah. like He was confident They said like When they used to describe him He said like He was like the most strict Out of the four khalifas on the deen Yeah, yeah. And that's that's because of strength He didn't want to bend any rules mm. He was never like a bender Someone yeah. else might say No nah, bismillah you're allowed Kind of thing You know I saw that someone else do this He's like not nah, the prophet didn't And yeah. he was the strictest you know? And guess who he was the strictest too Himself before anyone else. hundred yeah. percent. And that, that, that's what makes Umar Umar at yeah. the end of the day. I think what, one thing that was amazing that I wanted to touch on as well was the fact that when he was wrong, he could admit it. Mm. Like, he kind of like, he put the blueprint out of what a man should be like. You know what I mean? For the rest of us. Although the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Salam, obviously yeah. the ultimate. Yeah. yeah but then, like, um, a lot of the times, like, there's people that are, like, not a prophet. And although Umar was a yeah. Sahaba, and he's of the Ashara Mubashirin. Yeah. Um, he's also relatable because he seems a lot more like us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, sometimes yeah. people forget, like, the Prophet is perfect. Yeah. So sometimes people resonate with someone like Umar who maybe you, he makes a mistake and yeah. then you say, oh, look how he acted. The Prophet doesn't make mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes you understand that kind of thing because you resonate with the mistakes. And yeah. That. Um, and as well, at the same time, like, if you take all the Sahab and put them, like, in, like right in front of you, yeah. Everyone was different Not every Sahaba was the same yeah. So when people say Oh can you take Sahaba as a role model I'm telling you right now There is a Sahaba One of them That would resonate with you yeah. You know, I mean, you got Sahabas that Like for people that are struggling with drinking There were Sahabas that drank You know what I mean And they, f- they admitted that fault yeah. You know what I mean Umar was human One of my favourite parts of the seerah Yeah Was the battle of Hudaybiyah the, the bit which Bilal Asad mentioned the other day You know what I mean 
where he goes, Umar came up to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they were going to do Umrah and they were rejected. And he goes, like, are you not like, is Ilahi not our Lord? Like, did he not promise us something? Are you not are our... Are we not on the right path, yeah. Are we not on the right path? Are you not our thing? And he's asking questions, questions. And that's because um, it's called Umar is intrigued. He wants to know why. Because you know, he's a bit emotional in that situation. Think about it, they're traveling from Mecca. They're traveling from Medina, yeah, to go to, um, it's called um, Mecca, to go make Umrah. They haven't seen their homes in a long time. Mm. Think about it. This is their home. They've made Hijrah from this place. And then as they're about to set forth, someone goes, no, you can't do it. Mm. Umrah's personality comes out. Like he's raw emotions. You know what I mean? Later on, Abu Bakr had to come and put him in check. You know what I mean? Like they, Abu Bakr had to come and put him in check. Mm. Later on, he goes, I was too shy yeah, to be at the front of the lines. Like when they're heading back to Medina, I was too shy to be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah, because I thought he was a bit angry. I thought there was an ayah about to come out about me. You know what I mean? Because that was his raw emotions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And these people, like even though they are role models, they're up there. They have their flaws. Yeah. They're only human. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you take them with a grain of salt, but they are the best people to look up to yeah. after the NBA, essentially. There was a quote that he said that I really liked. I had to screenshot it. Whosoever shows you your faults is your friend. Those that pay you lip service in praise are your executioners. So, Damn. for Umar oh. al-Khattab to say something like that, bro, basically, he's the type of guy that you would think, like, big guy, strong, intimidating. He'd be the type of guy that you think is unapproachable. Someone you can't come to if you've got a query or you've got a, you've got a, you've got a f- like a like a problem with, you know, like, or he's done something to harm you. He's the type of guy... He seems like the type of guy that's big, strong, brute. He's just going to whack you. I tell you, get out of my face, man. What the hell's wrong with you? Which will be what a lot of the people that would have that size or that strength or that capability, they do that to us nowadays. Like, that, that's the type of people that, that, that'll be what people would do in this day and age because a lot of us are run off ego. But he knows that, like, um, whether or not I'm, I'm big or strong or whatever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He's there. Yeah. He's there. He exists, and he, I'm gonna return to him, and I'm gonna have to. Uh, he's gonna. He's gonna ask me about this, and I'm gonna have to answer to what I've done. So hearing that quote from him, bro, from somebody who you knew had authority, mm. who you knew had size, had strength, uh, he he didn't care. Do you know what I mean? He didn't too care too much about people, yeah. and it showed he had that development perspective or growth perspective. Mm. He's talking about people like your friends are the people that tell you about your faults, yeah. and the only reason that the Sahaba or the companions or anyone really that's trying to like on a, the right path would want to know their faults is to improve and get better, exactly. and get closer to Allah. So even him being like n- the number two or number three, like you know, wanting to know his faults is like such a high level. It's like. He could internally he knows his mistakes, yeah. but then he wants other people to say, "Why don't you improve this way?" Because to these guys, the point one matter, point one percent. Us one percent sometimes doesn't matter. So, yeah. oh, that's just makru. Yeah. That's just this. That's just the sunnah. To these guys, every little thing matters. Yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's like stay like remaining humble is the most yeah. important thing, and yeah, I will we'll push it over to you guys because I know there's heaps to talk about yeah. with Amar. Yeah. I want to say with one thing with Umar as well. Wasn't he in like the most influential people? I don't know if you guys oh, saw like that. He was in the top 100, bro. Who cares what those guys say, man? <laughs> no, but that's, that's pretty, think about how no, cool that is. 100%. Like in nowadays society, in a Western society, like some Western guy put Umar out of all people. Do you know mm. what I mean? They could have chucked anyone the in. Guy, Michael there. H. Hart, the guy that read the book, The 500 <laughs> Most Influential People. Yeah, he chucked Umar in there. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, because Prophet Muhammad was first. What's better than, what's better than hearing that if there was going to be a prophet after me, it would be Umar? Yeah. Isn't that better than yeah. top 100? Yeah. That's, 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 yeah. that's crazy. No, no, no. no, no. When like I say like that, I mean in terms of yeah. like even like the, in our day and age, they acknowledge Umar. Umar mm. isn't just a person in the Islamic world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people out there that are non-Muslims are acknowledging um, it's called this guy. And to have that impact as well is like, it's, it's crazy. Allahumma barik. You know what yeah, I mean? I'm just yeah. doing so, it. I'm just doing it. But yeah, Ashraf, chuck it with Mark you. Mark H. Hart, the book? Yeah. Yeah. Because number one is Prophet Muhammad. Number two is Sir Isaac Newton. While, while, he looks in, that up, Ashraf, while he looks that up, who's your person? I'm, I'm going to talk about Umar because I f- like when I ask people favorite Sahaba, because I've had mine for like a year 52. or two. 52? Okay. I'm 52. Yeah. Mm. So, That's crazy. Um, when I ask people like who's their favorite, because Umar is very spoken about, like I think Umar is more well known the stories than Abu Bakr. Because you know, like he's he's spoken about very frequently. Yeah, because bro, come on, man, he's got a legend. I know, no, 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 it's he goes into one alley. Yeah, it's it's not a it's not taking him down. It's pretty cool stories. It's, yeah. it's a it's a stature that he deserves. He's, got he's a number man, two. Yeah. 
you know, 100%. he's number two. Like, if there was going to be a prophet after Rasulullah, it would be so him. So, 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 so. But, like, for me, because he was someone who was, like, um, like strong, aggressive, physical, like, people knew, people could see his presence from, like, from a distance, you know, and people feared him, and physically he was a giant, mm. you know, mashallah, and he had that, like, um, he was always like the first to defend the Prophet or the first to like fight and to protect the Muslims. He always had his hand on his sword. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Look at me. So, me, my personality and what I, the aggressive nature, the fighting, that never like resonated with me as much. You know, so how I knew like when he was in school, he went through that kind of stage. So, seeing Umar be able to control it is like, that's the sta- status I want, the confidence to give people and protection. Yeah. But if there's a fight and if some guy comes down and fights, so how's going to jump in front of me? And then maybe you, and then I'll be like, okay. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'll be like, okay, I'm third. So it's not my nature kind of thing. So for me, the person I always resonated with was Uthman ibn Hafan. You know, and I think out of the four, he was least spoken about. Mm -hmm. I I, like, honestly, like when I talk to people about it, like, oh yeah, he was modest. He was shy, you know, but it's like, that's all someone might know. But it's like the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said like, every deen has a character, like a characteristic. And my characteristic is Hayat. And then when he married off, because um, Uthman, alhamdulillah, or had the pleasure of marrying two of the daughters of the Prophet Muhammad yes. You know, that's why Dhul Nurayn is known as like the possessor of the two lights. But when they, Abdullah ibn Umar, I just learned this, he said he wasn't just the person that married two of the daughters of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He was the only person to marry two daughters of any Prophet. Mm-hmm. So any Prophet from Adam to now, to ever, really, to the Day of Judgment, he was the only person to marry two. And when he, when Ruqayya, the first person to marry Uthman, when he was in, in the process, he said, Uthman is the closest to me in character and in looks, you know, because of the hayat, the character and the modesty. So even like Uthman's, his shyness, his modesty, it was something where it's like, it was more attainable. So to me, like, it was something like, because, you know, like they say hayat or modesty is a part of faith. So if you increase in modesty, you increase in faith. Mm. So I looked at it as like, if I can increase in modesty and that shyness between me and Allah, like it's sincerity, that's what shyness is You're sincere when you're doing something You don't have an ego like Allah, yeah. Allah's gonna accept this You're shy in front of Allah You should be like a beggar when you talk when you make dua to Allah So it always made me th- feel like I can improve in that way mm. So I can have hayat in front of people Because obviously we're in a society as well Where there's no hayat Not just with what we, w- what we do But we overshare, Wallah. we over talk And we have no like self-respect yeah, There's the no taqwa bro, no yeah. one's scared of Allah anymore bro Like as if he doesn't exist yeah. The consciousness he watches Allah. and hears everything. So when I see Uthman and hear the stories, Subhanallah, the Amana Hayat, like the angels used to be shy in front of him. Yeah, Come crazy. on, bro. Like that's the Prophet, you know, he, Salah Salam, oh. the stories about like him, yeah. he would wear like a garment that was maybe like he was very, he was relaxing, like he was lying down like how I am now. Abu Bakr anhu walks in, he stays the same. Abu Bakr leaves. Umar walks in, he stays the same. He leaves. Uthman comes in, he tells Aisha, yeah. clean up the house, make it look nice, and he sits up like this. Yeah. This is his clothes And then Aisha goes my, my dad came in You didn't change Umar came in You didn't change oh. And he goes How can I not be shy In front of the person Who the angels are shy in front of mm. And <laughs> even And even the, One other thing When Ruqayya The first uh, Ruqayya was um, About to get married And then because of Islam and stuff She didn't get married And then uh, she Uthman asked to marry her And they got married Okay So he married the first daughter and then Battle of Badr, he didn't go. She passed away. And there's like the day of great joy and the day of um, like sorrow because she passed away. Yeah. And then, so he lost, he had a son as well. So he, lost, he had lost a son who was the grandson of the Prophet. And he lost a wife who was the daughter of the Prophet. So for two, three years, he was lonely. And he's a shy person, not very outspoken. So he'll st- stick to himself. And the Prophet's like, what's wrong? You know, like where, like, I can see you're, you haven't been talking as much, you know. And then he goes, I've lost two things. I've lost my wife and I've lost my connection to you. Because he used to be the in-laws. He used to have a son who was the grandson. It was the connection. And he was so sincere in that moment when he said, I lost my connection. Angel Jibril came down. Mm. Angel Jibril doesn't do anything from his own desires. Angel Jibril came down and said, I command you to marry your other daughter to this man with the same mahr. But for the angel to come down. That's Allah. That's giving me goosebumps now. But for the angels to come down and say, Marry your other daughter. You only have four. So 50% is to one man. Yeah. To marry your other daughter to him is like another level. And then to, to do it, and then obviously she passed away later. And there's a hadith we said, if I had another like 40, 40 daughters, I'd marry them all to you until they pass away. Like the stature he has, you know, like even the journey of like 
making the Quran widespread because yeah. the the Quran was compiled in Abu Bakr's time, but only because they thought the Qaris, the Usaidis, are all passing away because of war. They thought they're going to lose the Quran. So Uthman brought it together with different qira'at for it to be widespread around the deen. You know, and just the stature he has and it's not spoken about. When I saw that connection, like, it's something where I can attain. His closeness to the Quran, the haya, you know, the character, that kind of thing. It's like, it's attainable for me. Because I heard Abu Bakr give 100% of his wealth. And because if I have a thousand dollars and I give 20, 50, it still hurts. Yeah. I can't give a yeah, thousand. But yeah. then I see like, even Uthman's generosity, he's one of the most generous companions, you know? Yeah, he gave a lot. But it's yeah. like, it was something more, I could link with it better. You know, that's me, per my personality. Yeah. The story of the well. Yeah. Where he bought half the well. Even like as a, as a businessman. Yeah. And that's that well still there to this day. Yeah. SubhanAllah. But so like, everyone kind of links with different people. And there's even like other companions and even role models, like people just link with it. But I felt like for me, it was the area of my deen I want to get closer in. Yeah. So someone else might want. As wanna, in the haya side of. Yeah, like yep. even haya and like strength of the Quran, but really haya as a modest. Like now in a society where one we don't have haya, I want to mm. increase in it. Not because of the society, but I know personally, it's like everyone kind of gets closer to Allah in different ways. But I feel like for me, it was one of those avenues. Like I th whenever I improve in it, because Haya is taqwa Like it's modesty And it's well, You know It's shyness Like it's taqwa So I felt like Whenever I improved in it Like even little things Like if I'm wearing shorts And I wear ma'awis Or sarong or something Or I cover up When I go swimming Or something Like those kind of things Made me improve in the deen Because everyone's On a different path And mm. if you don't know Like that you should Or shouldn't You're not accountable yeah. But for me It was That helped me Get closer to Allah So yeah. I just love his story Like And having Uthman As a person there Who's done all of yeah. that And I like That he's not spoken about oh. Like there's, there's beauty in being on the side Like even him Like he wasn't a big talker Like he wasn't like Umar or Uthman You know like um, Or Umar and Abu Bakr He wasn't like the big speakers Taking lead He wasn't the first yeah. And he was on the side But he was still up there yeah. I feel and like I, you're right it is, it is important Because If you're not shy with, Like in regards to like Allah SWT seeing you in public How are you going to be shy in private? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of the times Like we forget Allah's existence when we're private, like we're doing we're things by ourselves and then we might do something like we're not mm. supposed to or we might watch something we're not supposed to. We might, mm. You know what I mean? But it's the haya, it's that modesty. If you have that and you've gained it by obviously practicing it and, and putting it, in, like implementing that shyness mm. of Allah SWT in public, then private, you have that same consciousness. Because sh shyness is just taqwa. And it's not easy either. It would be, be there in private too. Shyness is taqwa, Which yeah. is the main thing, you know. Just 100%. Yeah. It's not easy, do you know what yeah. I mean? You can't. You can easily be shy in front of people and they just turn around. And that's one of the signs of hypocrisy. Yeah. Where it's easy for you to do certain things in public and then when you go in private, you just can't do that certain mm. thing. Do you know what I mean? You might chuck a couple of extra sunnas, do you know what I mean, in public and you go and think, it's like, ah, oh, yes, two sunnas, get out of here. I'm not going to do it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's one of the same things. And it's, you have to be super conscious as yeah. well for you to get up and say, it's like the discipline thing we always speak about. You know what I mean? For you to discipline yourself and remain that true character that you are consistently, whether you're in public or private, it's not an easy thing. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I feel like but through Allah's mercy, like as soon as you take a step towards the right direction, things could become easy. Yeah, for sure. Like as if you're actually genuine, you know, and you're only doing it like things actually become easy. It's weird how, how easy it becomes. And you're like subhanAllah like him going to the mosque or reading Quran, it just becomes normal. Like even after mm. two days. Normally say you build a habit, it takes twenty one days or ninety you days get or whatever. Higher. Pardon? You get an iman high, yeah. Yeah. But then if you actually just genuine, you know, like only for Allah's sake, Allah makes it so much easier than so many other things, like dunya things. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, well hundred percent for sure. I'm and if any one. like for the Uthman story, if people can listen to he, how he passed away, subhanAllah, what a story. Yeah, I think you that's know? probably one of the most famous bit? That's one of those famous yeah. parts of his story. Yeah. The it's way that he passed he away. He just kind of like took it, yeah? Was like, that now it? there's like, the, he was going through trial and tribulation. Yeah. I would listen to you after this if you want, but it's no. just an amazing I story. To, I have to hear it. I have yeah. to hear it for sure. It's just an amazing story. We'll link it. it. wasn't like an incident. It was like over time, people came into the house and then even how he replied to the people and with the Quran, like, it's a beautiful story. And it was yeah. sort of, yeah. his death was like the beginning of the end. I only remember, I only remember the night when, um, like when, like the night before he died, when um, the Rasul came Allah to him Allah. in his dream and said, you're going to break your fast with me. Yeah. Oh, that's the story, yeah. yeah. That's, the story. that's crazy, bro. Yeah. It's a movie. Hey, you could make a movie out of that. Nah, bro. Nah, just good, bro. It was. So they can he dramatize it here in nah, America. No, nah, no, not that side of things. Like in movie, terms bro. of like that night when um, at the same time, um, the cousins of Uthman 
yeah, sent them into the, to the house of Uthman and said, you're guarding them from the Khawarij. Yeah. You know what I mean? All of that and he's happening and he's just calm reading his kitab. Yeah. You know, Hassan and Quran. Hussein Abdullah ibn Umar were protecting the house. That's, yeah. that's, that's crazy yeah. as well. That's well, a story that I will play it next yeah. while like goosebumps. Yeah. And a lot of these things with like, like role models as well is like there's certain parts that catch you out even more. Like with the Umar story, like Umar's justice is just, like yeah. I find it crazy. Like how just this guy was and how harsh he was on himself. You yeah. know what I mean? And you, yeah. he probably wouldn't, Matukarad um, would call it harsh. He would just call himself checking himself. Self accountability. Bro, bro, in his, bro, in his last moments before he died, like Abdullah bin Umar had his head in his lap. And then he goes, put my head on the ground. Maybe Allah SWT will resurrect, like he will have mercy on me if he resurrects me mm. while I'm in a lower state. That's shyness and that's hayat. That's hayat. That's, and that's no ego. And, and these are like, do you know how many times no the Prophet place, said, bro. you're guaranteed Jannah, you're guaranteed Jannah, you're guaranteed bro, Jannah. Jannah. <laughs> but if someone told me that, Astaghfirullah, what I do. <laughs> you take your you foot know? off the pedal, bro. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, they realized, hang on, I know. <laughs> <Wait, laughs> also, I'm not going to do anything bad because I made it sound like I was going to do something bad. What is it? Like I said, oh, no, 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 it's just like, you just yeah, put, like, take your foot yeah. off the gate. In other words, like, you might not need to pray that sunnah or something. What do we? <laughs> I love but, that song, girls. But yeah, no, but basically, they used to see it like this. Like, and this is something that I wanted to develop on a Sheikh one time, inshallah, when we bring inshallah. him on. But like the relationship between us and Allah SWT. Yeah. We don't realize that we're his slave. Like, we expect things from God and we we need some sort of sign from Him. And who, like, who do we think we are, bro? Like, yeah. we need Allah to spark our sabr and we need Allah to spark our iman, our taqwa. And like, yeah. bro, you got to work for it. Yeah. And who, who are we to go? Yeah, Allah never gave it to me because... You know, he might have, like, 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 um, Allah never gave it to me, so I'm like, I'm not gonna pray, or I might, I might pull back on ibadah and stuff mm. like that. Like, yeah, bro, we're, we're, like, this is how it is. This is God, this is us, not even this. We're, we're his slaves. We're, we're supposed to beg. And we're not even like at the level of these guys we're talking about. Not even close. You know? But you know, I always heard, be a slave. You know, be a slave, but I never understood it until productive Muslim. The guy explained it, and when he explained it, it's on like you can see on my next to my desk. It just says, "Be a slave, not a worshiper." Yeah. And he goes, "We all we all worship Allah." Mm. And when we he's looking for, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you later. <laughs> he goes, "When we're a worshiper, we have choices." Yeah. You know, when you worship, you go, I don't have to pay sunnah. Mm. A slave doesn't have a choice. Mm. What his master says, you do. Sunnah at the mosque mm. Or sunnah after salat Or dhikr after So he goes Have a slave mentality It's like Whatever Allah said Use a miswak before You know Ghusl, shower You know Read the Quran mm. As a slave doesn't have a choice So do it like that yeah. And don't So be a slave Not a worshipper Bro there's there's also that thing um, Come on Seuss, Come on Get that thing back Come on It's like um, ah, Sorry I'll come back to it Slap your wrist Slap your wrist Try that Allah must salli Sayyidina Muhammad Salawat Who told you that? He's taking the piss It's salawat You gotta No um, It's like um, Come on Go go ahead Bismillah talk, I wanted to talk, ask talk, you talk, talk. Who, Which companion or sahaba Do you resonate with the most? Or like aspire to Get characteristics Of that individual See When we first discussed this topic Like I kept on saying Like tomorrow I have my answer Tomorrow I have my answer And I Honestly, I was thinking 10 minutes before, i got to have an answer. i got to say someone. I actually could not come up with someone. And that's mainly because, like, through certain phases of my life or certain stories, like, that bit captures my eye. Mm. And that resonates with me. For example, like, the justice of Umar at one point. Do you know what I mean? And if, if I actually had to say someone, it'd be Zubair. I always said Zubair. Zubair is always my favorite Sahaba. And that's just because of Talha and Zubair. Talha and Zubair always remind me of the boys. <laughs> like for some reason It sounds like a joke But like they were the yeah. boys Like there's a saying Where it goes um, Whenever you heard Talha You heard Zubair And whenever you heard Zubair You heard Talha Yeah And then whenever you heard them To you always heard Ali And they were the trio That would always roam around uh, Mecca and Medina The young boys you know, that's The young was, boys yeah. And like I started to listen To like the stories Of like the prophets And the sahaba At like a young age You know what I mean And I only listened to it Just for like the sakes of it You know what I mean And like out of everything that I remembered, I'll always remember them three guys. You know what I mean? Like it was cool to be around them. And you wanted to be one of the boys. I wanted to be one <laughs> of those boys. They made it, they made a cool. And mind you, all of this has gone along. And Zubair was twelve when he was getting tortured for being a Muslim. You know what I mean? Like he him at nighttime in Mecca. Yeah, he's um, I've got one of his family members would chuck him in a carpet, roll him up. You know what I mean? And that he would torture him. 
And they used to say the people of Makkah would hear the screams of Zubair every single night. What? Think about how strong you have to be at the age of like 12, 13. Yeah, to be strong in your faith in the sense that like I know this is the case. Yeah. yeah? That, that like all of that stuff. These guys were warriors from a young age. They always yeah. used to say Talha, Zubair and Ali were the warriors of the um, what's it called, the young Sahaba. Mm. You know what I mean? That young Sahabas. They were always the young ones. But then there's also other characteristics from like Can you delve more into Zubair? Like what resonated Because some of our audience Haven't yeah. heard his story So what resonated What made you resonate with him Because obviously when he was 12 He had that strength But was there Like later the, on Things he did or the Later on It would probably be The story when He's about to die You know what I mean And obviously the fitna Is arising between Mecca and Medina Like there's a lot going on And you can listen to the story For yourself yeah But there's this passage way Where like He's about to die He knows it's the end Yeah there's a lot of A lot of fitna being arised And he's in Mecca at this time you know, I mean, the Muslims have now obviously they're occupying um, occupying Mecca, and then after in his final days, he's going to his mum and he's seeking advice from his mum. Yeah, and he goes, "Mum, what do you think I should do?" You know what I mean? And I just think like these guys, Zubair, bro, in that time, you know, what I mean, he's one of the like the elite of the Sahaba. He's you know in the I mean? ten times Jannah, like, yeah, like he he's famous at that time, yeah. like he's up there. You know what I mean? And a lot of people nowadays, like when they like get to a certain status, like no one matters in their life. You know what I mean? Especially the people that were there for you from the get-go. Mm. You know what I mean? This guy in his final days is going to his mum. He's like, mum, what do you reckon I should do? He knows the answer. You know what I mean? He knows the answer. He goes to mum, what do you think I should do? And then after she goes and gives him advice and he's asking about whether I should wear shield or whatnot. He goes, that's not how the shuhad go out. You know what I mean? Whatnot. But the fact that little things like that, this guy's logical. You know what I mean? He thinks about every move that he's making and whatnot. Mm. So it's uh, little stories like that. And that story is between him and his son. It's, it's Zubair And the same characteristic Falls with Abdullah as well And that's why that group of Which Abadira Abdullah? Abdullah. Abdullah and Zubair okay, so And, yeah. and that, that same characteristic Falls across the board With all the Sahabas Of the um, of the legend The sons of the legendary Sahabas yeah. So you're like, saying logic? Logic is uh, No, no, no Just his, his relationship with his mum Abdullah bin Zubair's yeah. relationship so Even at the highest Pinnacle of like Being the man In the, in the top ten yeah. He could still have like Go to his mum for not knowledge. He so, he, so he seeks advice, no ego, logic. He was one of the boys, his strength, you know? And you, you know at the time as well, when the whole fitness has been arising, he is technically the leader of Mecca. You know what I mean? So he's in a position of, like he's, he, he has a position oh. of status. You know I mean? He's not a nobody. You know I mean? This is Abdullah is what we're talking about. Um, what I was also going to say to you guys was, um, the same with the Abadilas, yeah, in terms of like the sons of the famous Sahabas, like Ibn Umar, his son. Ibn Abbas is another one. You know what I mean? All of them all shared similar characteristic, which me obviously, like I'm young, you know, I'm not some old bloke. And sometimes you can't resonate with the older Sahabas, like Umar and whatnot. You know what yeah. I mean? And you see young guys just making cr- yeah. like, things normal. It's pretty lit. But yeah. Um, yeah. It's like the, uh, there's a the stories of like funny companions. You know, when I hear the story, it's like it shows the all got different senses of humor. And it's like you can kind of resonate with them because yeah. like what kind of people that crack jokes? Yeah. But then I've heard stories of like. Serious. Um, like Yahya, the Prophet Yahya, or Ibn al Jawzi, like people used to say, Come play with me. Yeah. And he goes, Life isn't for play. Yeah. Or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked past, past a group of people and they're all laughing, and he goes, Laughing deadens the heart. And it's like, imagine if I was said that to someone. It's a very serious thing, and it's true, oh maybe God. excessiveness. Kill the vibe, yeah. But it's, uh, it, it's, yeah. it's more like it's the consciousness that death is around. So it mm. depends, time and place. Mm. But it's like, when you hear other stories about the young guys having fun and the prophet letting it go, yeah. or your funny companions cracking jokes and stuff and the prophet letting it go, it's yeah. like time and place. It's like you can resonate with that kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. It's and there are sahabas that drank. Like when I was telling the story of like Nu'man, for example, when he used to drink in public and whatnot, like everyone knows the story of like, like Nu'man. And the sahaba always used to like belt him for it. Like he used to say like, what are you doing? And it's like mm. that. It's like, and then after the Rasulullah, I think there was like a poet saying, used to say when they used to do that, it goes, um, don't make it easy for the shaitan to continue allow him to do fitna. Because he's already struggling with the shaitan. And by you putting him down, now he's got two battles going on. You know what I mean? There's always like, there's always a person that you can like resonate with. And that's why I was going to tell you about the, like, the story of like Ka'b ibn Malik. His story as a sahaba is one of the most like amazing stories to me in the seerah. It's like when, like the story of Tabuk, when Ilahi commands all of these, um, the sahabas and Rasulullah to go to, um, to go on a uh, basically a qazwa, a, a war, yeah. And as they're on their war, it was mandatory for everyone to go. No excuses. Pack up your bags, go. And this is the same battle where the story of Abdullah, um, Abu Bakr, and Umar comes out. 
you know, when Abu Bakr goes and gives 100% of his wealth and Umar comes and yeah. gives half of his wealth. So it's like, <laughs> it's tough time. So everyone yeah. has to go. Yeah. And there was conditions for some people that couldn't go. Kaab and Malik was a guy that had, a sahaba that had like a lofty garden. He was well set and whatnot. The dunya got the best of him. He stayed in Mecca and Medina. So then Rasulullah and the whole army and the sahaba is already out. And they're like, where's Kaab and Malik? You know what I mean? And Kaab and Malik, he just stayed later on, whenever Rasulullah came back. And every time they used to go on the Qazwa, the hypocrites will come back. They, you'd have to say, why did you stay like from the Qazwa? And the hypocrites used to make excuses. Oh, this one, my leg fell off, this, blah, 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 whatnot. Ka'ab and Malik was coming up to Rasulullah and he goes to Rasulullah. He goes, um, he goes, I was thinking of an excuse. I had the best excuse in mind. And he goes, I was one of the best storytellers. So if there's anyone that I could convince, I would convince anyone. And he goes, but as I was approaching Rasulullah, I was like, even though I lied to him, I can't lie to Allah. You know what I mean? And he goes, oh, what do I do in that instance? Yeah. Then he goes, whatever. I told Rasulullah and Rasulullah was happy. But as he was approaching Rasulullah he saw like a, a rough smile on Rasulullah's um, face. Like he saw Rasulullah smiling, but he wasn't happy at the same time. Mm. And that made him change his mind. So he goes away and whatever. And the people go to him. Oh, like, why didn't you just lie? Rasulullah was going to say yes, regardless. And that's where he says the famous thing about like, even though I might be able to lie to Rasulullah but the, the Lord of the Rasulullah will still know me. You know what I mean? And then the consciousness they have The Sorry, consciousness is crazy Subhanallah But like But then the whole emphasis Why I mentioned So I didn't just waffle Yeah Is The Sahaba loved the dunya too mm. You know what I mean Ka'ab Malik was one of the Big Sahabas of the Ansar You know what I mean He wasn't just a regular bloke You know what I mean So like Little stuff like that you, You'll find a story Of a so Sahaba that loves the dunya And you'll be like yeah. So when we talk about Like Abu Bakr giving 100% of his wealth not all the companions were like that. Not, not all of so them. So it's did normal that. for a companion to love the dunya because us, we think, oh, why did Abu Bakr give 100% and I like my car so much? Or I love my car, or I love clothes, or I love. Yeah. SubhanAllah. And then, then that's where people make excuses, or oh, I can't resonate with the Sahaba. Yeah. But you just look into it, give it a bit of time, then yeah. you'll find someone. I think, yeah, that, that's that's the best thing about learning from the from those, um, the companions of the Prophet, oh. is that they're, they're, they're prophets. That we never ended up finding out companions like like we never f found out about their companions yeah. and the people that were around them, and it makes it a lot less relatable when Musa alayhi was kicking it with his brother who happened to be a prophet as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they were talking and they get revelation from God, mm. and we're like, okay, we didn't get revelation. We're mm. not prophets, and yeah. but then you got the people that were around that time, and they had the same struggles as we did. Mm. They didn't have the um, the how can we say it? They didn't have the ability to plead ignorance like we do, like because we can say, "Oh, we d we never got like we never got the message. We never saw we never the sign about it." Do you know what I mean? Like, and the people that did have the message, they had the Prophet in front of them. Awesome. They still messed up, mm. and it shows us that we have the capability to mess up like them. Do you know what I mean? And that, like, um, when you see and you hear things from, like, for example, Omar talking about. Ghiba when people were around us, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah, like he he felt jealous. Do you know what I mean? When he um, oh, what was the story again? Wow, I'm losing my memory quick these days, bro. There was he had he had he had um he had protective jealousy over the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't want anyone to go near him to mess with him. He was always there to protect the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that doesn't that remind you of like that mate? Do you have the right or die that if something yeah. happens, he's there front line, you know? Yeah. Or you have. For example, Ali, yeah, Ali was smart, bro. Ali was so smart, and he was a warrior too. Like he talked, like one thing that he said that was relatable to me is like, um, he goes, um, be polite or like be like the flower that even when the, it, it it gets it gives away like beautiful fragrance even to the hand that crushes it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah. So it's like it's like basically they have, they have like. Relatable circumstances, regardless of the, the 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 contextual, like the the time and the era and stuff like yeah. that. It's just that, like we we're saying, yeah. humans all have the same yeah. challenges, core and challenges, yeah. and, ups and, and downs. And needs but it's and timeless needs. advice. But like even doing study for this episode, like preparing for, it was just beautiful listening to it because I don't like I we neglect the four companions or the ten promised Jannah. You know, like it's something beautiful to actually like take a step back and try to like learn about them because they all had like such beautiful and deep lives mm -hmm. and such an impact on our deen. Like it's something that we like for the audience or for anyone like in Ramadan especially, just spend some time to actually listen to it. 
because actually beautiful and you kind of see who you like resonate with and you pick up traits because sometimes you listen to a story but there's nothing to act upon but when you listen to like autobiographies or biographies or life advice you can kind of like say let me try to pick up that habit that trait you know yeah. or that mindset that perspective i didn't yeah. see that like this or yeah this this is something that I, I probably wouldn't have been able to to to, to unpack myself yeah. had i not got this like life advice from Umar. like yeah. i'm usually like come on after hearing that that quote that I said from before, like about like Amr said, bro, you look at people who would trash you and you'd be like, bro, these guys are the lowest blokes. So I see them as trashing me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Somebody says, cause you know, like fix your, fix your shorts. Like they're a bit too short. Yeah. Or somebody come up to you and go, brother, you know, the back, your back is showing during Saleh. Like it might, might nullify your Saleh. You know, you look at this guy like, bro, who do you think you are coming up to me, talking to me? Yeah. What? Well, it doesn't matter. I look, I came to the mosque and I'm, yeah. um, bro, chill. The guy, you got to see where he's coming from. He, I don't think there's any good way to approach somebody in those days. You can't do, Habibi, how are you? Are you good? Is everything fine? Listen, your back was showing. Bro, even then people take it wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you make it quick, short and sharp, he's not getting nothing out of it. Maybe he does. Maybe mm. maybe, maybe he gets out of it like, I don't know, maybe ego boost. But you can't see it like that. You have to see that. Okay, this guy went out of his way to tell me. Regardless of how he said it, he told me something good. He's helping me bring my salah back. So take like take the emotion out of it. Take see the what it is. Out of it. Yeah. Exactly. And it's timing that matters as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. very, very good for us. Subhanallah. Well, that's and interesting. You know this right? goes, we've mentioned guy sahabas as well, and there was female sahabas out there that yeah. were like amazing as well. Like Fatima, for example. You know what I mean? And the whole resonating thing with them. The sahabas weren't kings and queens living in mountains and they had gold spoons and whatnot feeding mm. to them. You know what I mean? They had it rough to themselves. You know what I mean? Like Fatima, for example, when she went up to um, Rasulullah and asking him, and that was her dad. Was yeah. she considered Sahaba? Sahabiat, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Sahaba or companion is just someone like a company at the same time. Yeah. Sahaba yeah. is anyone at the same time. Yeah, sorry, bro. Go ahead. But yeah, and she's, she goes to Rasulullah, her dad. He like, I need help. Like, me and Ali, you know, and like, we're having a rough out here. Like, my hands are a bit frail and all that kind of stuff. And that's when Rasulullah gives her the advice to that, that saying, like, say this one thing, and that will help you out. And the, forget the saying for one second. Like, actually delve into the saying. Don't forget it. But, like, it's in terms of, like, the story behind it, these were normal people. You know, and probably even have had it rougher than us. Mm. You know what I mean? I had that rougher than us. They definitely Come on, had but it look at me. There's not a scratch on my body, bro. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> Do you get what I mean? So it's like they had it way rougher than us. This is like his scratch here, scratch here, <laughs> scratch here. <laughs> go on, go on. Yeah, so basically that's what I was saying. So they had it rougher than us. It's like we can't complain, man. You can always mm. find a role model. In the Amr al khair, yeah? Exactly or whatnot. Yeah. Um, I reckon about we wrap it up there, inshallah. Hundred percent. But yeah, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe um, to all our um, what do you call it, social platforms. Well, also the podcasting platforms, as don't well as our podcasting platforms. If, if you, you haven't like known, we're on iTunes, yeah. Spotify. If you don't SoundCloud. like our heads here, you might as well just go listen to our voices. <laughs> yeah. We do have heads for radio. Let's be honest. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Suss out our TikTok as well, guys. We're on TikTok. Um, we might be doing challenges soon, who knows, whatnot. But yeah, enjoy, share it to a friend, family, and give us feedback. Asalaamu Alaikum.